ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Happy Friday to ya. Happy Friday. Yes, honey, it is TGIF. What's going on, tea sippers? I hope you guys are doing good today. It is officially Friday, February 4th, which means we are four days into Black History Month, honey. And yes, the fuckery is afoot, okay? We got to talk about all this drama that's going on with Miss Tandy Newton, honey. If y'all don't know, she is going viral right now because she decided, child, nobody, Nobody at all. Here comes Tandy Newton with her cape. Dun, 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 dun. I'm light skin. I have privilege and I want to apologize to all the dark skinned women out there for taking your roles and taking your man. <laughs> I was just like, what in the black history month is going on here? Okay. So Tandy decided to come out of nowhere and basically apologize to dark skinned women. Then she further goes on on a rant about her being light skin. But back when she lived in the UK, people out there thought she was dark skin. And then when she came to America, you know, what I'm saying black people in America treated her bad because she was light skin. Child, this whole rant was so nonsensical. I'm going to go ahead and play this for y'all. Y'all go ahead and check it out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. I've wanted so desperately to apologize every day to, to, to darker skinned actresses to say, I'm sorry that I'm told I'm the one chosen. My mama looks like you. My mom looks like you and she, It's been very painful to have women that look like my mum. Feel like I'm not representing them. That I'm taking from them. Taking their men, taking their work, taking their truth. I didn't mean to women of color who whether they're pale or whatever, who've managed to help other actors, you know, get into this business. We, you know, we, we, we matter. I was worried about my light skinness because my light skinness has been more problematic than being black, is being light skinned, has been way more problematic than being black in my life. Literally, I was black in England. I mean, dark skinned. And so then I went to America and I was dark skinned. I thought I was dark skinned and I would describe myself as dark skinned. It's like, you're light skinned. And suddenly I was someone that, you know, f you for being light skinned. I got more prejudice from black people. I didn't understand. I literally didn't understand. I thought, you're my breth brethren, what's happening? So interestingly, I now realize that my, like, internalized prejudice was stopping me from feeling like I could play this role when it's precisely that prejudice that I've received it doesn't matter that it's from African-American women more than anyone else it doesn't matter I received prejudice anyone who's received oppression and prejudice feels this character right so it's actually I love the fact that I overcame that and it was these guys going you're the one I just thank God that my light skin didn't stop that from happening. I'm so, you know, that it didn't cause more pain. You know, sorry, I just hadn't, I hadn't actually made that connection before for me as a woman, that one of the reasons why it's so painful to be, dismiss, to be distrusted by African-American women, darker skin than me, and they look like my mum. And I love her more than anything. All right. So you guys just heard Tandy Newton and what she had to say. She was crying and she was saying, you know, it's sad that people who look like her, you know, dark skin mama and dark skin grandmother, they don't get the same, you know, opportunities as she has. And she's sorry. Child, basically that apology reminded me of Gretchen from Mean Girls. Y'all remember Gretchen, honey? When she got up there and was like, I'm so sorry that I'm popular and I'm more prettier than you guys. And then she thought everybody was about to catch her. And the only person who catched her was Karen. 
Y'all go ahead and check this out. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me. But I can't help it that I'm popular. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, that is the apology. And that is what Tandy Newton's apology reminded me of. And what's very interesting, I, I don't know what is going on in the industry, but I'm very tired of this whole woke train. If you guys remember her twin, you know, a lot of people confuse her with Zoe Saldana. Even Zoe Saldana's mama confuses her with Tandy Newton, okay? Check this clip out. Oh, my my parents, my mom, my mom still thinks that I'm in Westworld. Like, <laughs> are you serious? I'm like, I'm like years no. ago, years ago, you thought that I was in traffic. Mom, <laughs> you did not give birth to Tandy Newton. <laughs> All right. So that is her bootleg Hollywood twin. If y'all remember in 2020, Zoe Saldana came out and was crying tattoo tears and apologizing for playing Nina Simone and saying that Nina Simone deserved better. And we talked about it on my live stream and I told y'all back then I wasn't buying her apology. The only reason why she's crying tattoo tears, honey, is because the movie flopped. Had that motherfucker been nominated for a damn Oscar... OK, you want her to peep. You want her an apology. But because it flopped and she was clowned. Now the son Nina Simone deserved better after you chose to play the role. When so many people told you do not play this role. We're not watching this. We're not going to support it. I remember doing a video about this way back then calling out Zoe on her bullshit choice for taking on the role of Nina Simone. But anyways, y'all y'all go ahead and check out her apology right here. A lot of controversy around the decision that you made to play Nina Simone. And at the time, there were a lot of questions around blackface and darkening skin and prosthetics. And I wonder what is your relationship with that choice now? How has the process of evolution for you and in loving yourself changed not only the roles that you're taking today, but how it makes you reflect on that decision? I should have never played Nina. Mm. I should have never played Nina. Um, I should have done everything in my power with the leverage that I had 10 years ago, which was a different leverage, but it was leverage nonetheless. I should have tried everything in my power to cast a black woman to play an exceptionally perfect black woman. Yeah. At th at that, it's you know, growing, it's painful. I thought back then that, I thought back then that I, I was, I, I, had, I had the permission because I was a black woman and I am, but I, but it was Nina Simone and Nina had a life and she had a journey that should have been, and it should be honored to the most specific detail because she was a specifically detailed individual about her voice and her opinions and her views and her music and her art. And she was so honest, so she deserved better. And, but that said, so I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Because I love her music. But it wasn't enough, it shouldn't have been enough. But that said, she's one of our giants. Somebody else should step up. Somebody else should tell her story because she's one of those people that I'm besotted that Nina Simone, her story hasn't been like, like a global fucking impact. When we're taking her music for car, and we're using it in car commercials, and or I'm taking her image and her story, and I think that I'm okay to tell it. We've been appropriating ourselves with someone like Nina Simone for a very long time, and. I, I just want her story to be told and I want it to be right because she deserves it and our America deserves it because the Americans that inhabit today's America deserve her story to be told and and I know I know better today and I, I'm never going to do that again. All right, so y'all saw her crying and saying that she regretted it. And like I said, back then it caused a lot of controversy. And she still chose to go on with it. She allowed them to darken her skin to make her a dark-skinned woman. She allowed them to put a prosthetic on her nose to give her, like, you know, more of a full nose like Nina Simone. So you had no problem doing all of this. But now all of a sudden everybody's woke. 
all of a sudden everybody cares about dark skinned women. I feel like both of them were doing virtual signaling. And with Zoe, she's just trying to look better, you know, because a lot of black people were turned off from her. I mean, you know, if you're a Marvel fan, we fuck with Guardians of the Galaxy, honey. But we ain't forgot that whole Nina Simone debacle, okay? So I wasn't really buying her tattoo tears because, like I said, had she won accolades and had that movie taken off, she wouldn't apologize. Now, my issue with Thandy is this, right? Tandy, and I don't speak for all dark-skinned black women. I speak for my damn self. But I don't recall hitting you up. I don't recall any of my dark-skinned friends hitting you up and saying that we need an apology from you. We don't want an apology, ma'am. We just want equal opportunity, okay? That is the difference. I don't care if you're taking our men. I don't know what men you're taking because there's plenty of men out here that I see. So I don't know what men you're taking. You're married. So let's start there. But, you know, another thing that's funny to me is that, you know, she's also upset. She's speaking on the light skin thing. I don't like the fact that she's apologizing for being light skin. After a while, her rant came off as light skin guilt. I don't even know if that's a word, but, you know, y'all use the word white guilt. It came off as light skin guilt. And I feel like this, at the end of the day, like I always say on this channel, nobody should have to apologize for how God made them. Period, point blank. I can't help my dark skin, my skin tone, any more than a light-skinned person, a biracial person, an Asian person can help their skin tone. So why are you apologizing for being light-skinned? That is stupid. I would never apologize for being a dark-skinned woman, okay? So let's start there. We don't need you to say sorry for being light skinned. You sound crazy. And another thing, she's doing this during Black History Month. She's obviously promoting a movie or something. But my issue, it just comes out very disingenuous and just silly. It just comes off silly. You're crying, snot's running down your nose. You're doing all these apologies. If you really felt that way, then you would not have taken the roles. It's that simple. People write roles all the time. That doesn't mean that you have to audition for them. And th that's the problem in Hollywood. They're not addressing the bigger issue. A lot of this stuff don't even have to do anything with the actors because, like I said, everybody was born how they were born, okay? And if you happen to be racially ambiguous, and this is a big word that they use in Hollywood, meaning that nobody can put you in a specific box, that when people look at you, they don't know if you're mixed, if you're Latina, if you're Arab, if you're, you know, Mexican. If you are ambiguous, that is like the most preferred thing in Hollywood. They love ambiguous people because they can play multiple roles. Whereas if you're dark skinned, you can only play black. Your roles are limited. That is just facts. Just like if you're full white, you can only play white. Your roles are not limited because Hollywood was catered to white people. But if you're black, your roles are definitely limited, especially if you're dark skin. Now, this light skin privilege has been talked about for years in Hollywood. We've had actors like Amanda Stenberg come out and talk about her light skin privilege. We've had Zendaya talk about it um, and Yahara Shahidi. I think she's talked about it, but not really, because she tends to just play like she's full black. But her father is from the Middle East. Now, I will say this. There was even a point when Zendaya came out and she said that she's making it a point to, you know, where she's turned down roles that she felt were fit for full black and especially dark skinned women. And recently she did an interview because, as y'all know, her show Euphoria is popping right now. Right. Crazy. ass show. we're going to do a whole podcast about it. But um. Recently, she was interviewed again, and this was in June 2020. And this is what they said in the interview. Zendaya was asked about her previous statements of telling her agents to put her name up for a variety of roles, even if it costs for white women to play them, in order not to take up space for black actresses of darker complexions. She said she absolutely still asks her agents, recognizing that she has the privilege as a woman with lighter skin. I also think it's important being a lighter skinned woman to recognize my privilege in that sense as well and make sure that I'm not taking up space where I don't need to, she said. I think that's been a choice for myself. Our creator, Sam Livingston, wrote Rue based off of his own experience with addiction, and he is a white man, so Rue could have been that. Rue had no description, so I'm very grateful, and hopefully I'll be in more spaces like these ladies where I can create things and make a space for other women who look like me and women who don't look like me, she continued. That's the ultimate goal, make room, because for a lot of black creatives, it's not for lack of talent, but lack of opportunity. So that is what she's saying. But even with that being said, though, 
when you watch Euphoria, please name me the black characters on there besides the football player, McKay. There's no black female characters on there. There's no black friend groups that hang out with this clique of girls. You know, it is a very ambiguous cast, you know, so it's not just white people. There's Latinas on there. You know what I'm saying? The one guy's Filipino. But there's not any black women on there. So at the end of the day, even if Zendaya is telling her agent, well, don't cast me for this role because it seems too black, it doesn't matter. The industry has the final say. And at the end of the day, in human nature, you're going to use your privilege. And we can't knock people for that. It is human nature to benefit off of that. That's no different than when we talked about pretty privilege not too long ago. If you're lucky enough to have pretty privilege, you're going to use that to your benefit, okay? You're not going to turn down, you know, a free drink or, you know, people giving you extra tips because you're pretty or wanting to pay for your gas. Most people are not going to turn that down. You're going to take it with a smile, you know what I'm saying? Just like if somebody's extremely tall and they can play basketball, they're not going to cry boohoo tears and say, well, let the guy who's five foot nine, you know what I'm saying, make it to the NBA because he's just as good, even though he's too short. So there's certain privileges that people, you know what I'm saying, they're going to use them to their benefit and it's okay. So for me, I feel like this whole her shaming herself, it comes off as just really fake and disingenuous. You know, at the end of the day, the conversation needs to be about this. One, I think one of the main conversations should be getting rid of this whole one drop rule. This is where all of this confusion, chaos and drama comes from. The problem is so many people, especially black folks, like to claim anybody would have drop a black on them. I went to go Google some stuff about um, Fez, the dude who plays Fez on Euphoria, um, Angus Cloud. And one of the top questions is, is he black? I think he's black. Oh, he's a brother. No, he's not. He's a white man with red hair and blue eyes. Why are we so desperate to claim people as black? When you're desperate to claim everyone is black, this is what you have. So now, why should I go with a full black person, a dark skinned black person, when somebody who looks like Zendaya and Amanda and Yara Shahidi are considered black? They're going to go with people who they feel is more palatable to white America. Let's keep that real. So they need to, you know, people need to stop with this whole everybody's black. If you have a drop of black and you're black because all you're doing is slowly erasing yourself and your skin tone and your ethnicity okay out of those particular roles and it's really sad because Zendaya is talking as if she just has light skin privilege you're a biracial woman and that's not even us hitting on texturism featurism and things like that you know what I'm saying so the shit goes really deep but I think they, we need to get rid of this whole one drop mentality. It's okay for people to just be light skinned. It's okay for people to just be biracial and call themselves biracial. That should not make them, they shouldn't be demonized for that. And they shouldn't be told, no, you're not biracial, you're black. They are biracial, they're not black. And this is because of that mentality why so many biracial and racially ambiguous people are allowed to play black roles. And I believe that was all by design. You know, and I think the whole situation is sad. Another thing we need to hit on. We don't need Tandy's light skin tears, ma'am. What we need is opportunity. Like I said at the beginning of this show, we need opportunity. And those opportunities come by the way of Hollywood, the casting directors. That is where the change needs to start. Even once we get those opportunities, it's still not fair. Viola Davis spoke on this not too long ago. And as we all know, Viola Davis is a very talented, beautiful, dark skinned woman who is a phenomenal actress who has put in work for years but the mainstream media still does not pay her or show her the same level of respect as they do a Meryl Streep, a Bette Midler, and all of these, you know, great iconic white actresses. Viola Davis should be on that same plateau as them, should get paid the same amount, and she's still fighting and hustling every day just to get these roles. So let me go ahead and play you guys what Viola Davis had to say about the situation in Hollywood. We won't talk about gender inequality of pay. Because a lot of the women who've stepped forward, and I stand in solidarity with them, okay? What they're getting paid, which is half of what a man is getting paid, well, we get probably a tenth of what a Caucasian woman gets. And I'm number one on the call sheet. And then I have to go in and I have to hustle for my worth. That's what I feel like I'm doing. When I demand what I feel, listen, I have a, more than a 30-year professional career. I have, 
I had a friend who said, yeah, but Viola, your career is better than my career. I said, yeah, but you can't compare me to you. Because once again, I got the Oscar, I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys, I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, let's Sigourney Weaver, they all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU, they had the same path as me, and yet I am nowhere near them. Not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, nowhere close to it. And yet, I have to constantly get on that phone, and I have fabulous agents, by the way, they, they are getting it. But I have to get on that phone and people say, you're a black Meryl Streep. <laughs> you are, and we love you. We love you. There is no one like you. Okay, then if there's no one like me, you think I'm that, you pay me what I'm worth. You give me what I'm worth. And, not, and, and even in terms of roles, because when I delve into a role, I want something complicated too. I do. Just like building the most unbelievable structure, a, sculpting, a, a sculptor wants to build the most unbelievable building. That's how I feel, that's what I, I do as a human being, as an artist. I want to build the most complicated human being. But what I get is the third girl from the left. So y'all just heard what Viola had to say, and she is saying the truth. You know, it's bigger than having this woman, you know, Thandy sit there and cry about, you know, oh, I'm crying for my dark skinned sisters because I took your roles and your man. Ma'am, we don't care. First of all, you're not the casting agent. You don't run Hollywood. Sit down. What's more important to dark skinned women, like Viola said, if you can compare me and say that I'm the white Meryl Streep, pay me. Pay me like I'm the white male Streep. Pay me like I'm Viola Davis. Don't just compare me and say that I'm just as good as her, but then I don't see the financial rewards. I don't get the same accolades, or it took her a lot longer to get to where she's at than it took a Meryl Streep. You know, and then on top of that, like she says, a lot of black people want more complicated roles. Why do you guys think Black Panther just, just went crazy the way it did? Because it was a different light that you saw so many talented black people in. They were play playing really complex roles, you know, positive roles, dark roles, but it was just complex. It was good. Usually when we go see anything with the Marvel Universe, it's all white characters. And then you might have the Falcon. <laughs> okay. You might have a black character here or there, but it's usually mainly white characters. That is why Black Panther did so well, because we don't get to see ourselves like that. A lot of times with black roles or roles that include black people or dark skinned black people, it's always, you know, the low vibrational roles. A lot of times you're casted as the prostitute, the drug dealer, the crackhead. It's always the same hood stuff. Whereas, you know, when you look at these roles that other people get to play, they get to play a vast range of roles. You know, I'm not saying that there's not a need for actors who can play prostitutes and crackheads, but black people are so much more than that. So, you know, this whole situation goes way deep. And I hope her tattooed tears really spark a conversation because it's not so much about light skinned women giving up their roles to, you know, black women. Because you can give up your role. They're just going to grab the next light-skinned woman that they want in that role. You know what I'm saying? Just like with Zendaya, she says, well, she doesn't want herself getting submitted, you know, to this, this, and that. But she's on one of the top shows right now, Euphoria. I don't see too many black girls there in any main roles. I see them in the, black, I see them in the background at the parties and dancing, but they're not any main characters. So, again, the system needs to change. That's what it is. The system needs to change and black people need more opportunities if they want to be in this industry. This conversation definitely goes deep, but I was definitely put off by, you know, just the way Tandy was just the way Tandy was just operating and crying and carrying on. And then she went on that whole spiel about, you know, apologizing for what God made her. It's like, ma'am, you're just you're doing a lot right now. You're just doing a lot. I don't know if you're just trying to be woke or you're virtual signaling, but you're just doing a lot. And we don't care. We want opportunities. We want to be paid fairly. You know what I'm saying? We want more complex roles. Let's start with that first, okay? We don't need apologies for you stealing roles and taking people's men's. We don't care. 
So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping, honey. Let me know what you guys think about this entire situation concerning Thandi Newton, basically on this hobo apology tour to dark-skinned black women. Did you ask for this apology as a dark-skinned black woman, or were you minding your black business and, you know what I'm saying, just about to enjoy your Friday? I don't recall asking for this, but okay, ma'am. Um, and then how do you guys feel about the whole one drop rule? Like I talked about, and do you feel like that's where a lot of this stems from? Because at this point, we claim anyone is black, you know, mixed, biracial, racially ambiguous. And because of that, this is why there's not a lot of roles now for full black people or dark skinned black people. Because again, everyone is black. As long as you have a drop, they can play both sides. If they need a biracial woman, to play a role they can fulfill it if they need a black one to play a role they can also fulfill it. if they need a racially ambiguous person to play a role they can fulfill it but if you're black and especially if you're dark skin if they say they want a racially ambiguous person you will not get casted if they say they want a light-skinned person you will not get casted you are only going to be submitted for roles that specifically say dark skin black woman or man so the whole situation is crazy but like i said it goes deep but i want to hear from y'all let me know y'all's thoughts go ahead and leave a comment don't forget to hit that subscribe button in case you were unsubscribed by youtube honey and make sure you guys share the video and i'll talk to y'all later deuces